Histograms are good for telling us the relative frequencies of different samples of things inside of a particular category. Histograms plot the number of times a value occurs in a data set. With enough samples, the histogram will approach the true distribution. So in this case, you can see on the right the regular normal distribution, the bell curve. On the left, you can see a bunch of values that are also drawn from a bell curve distribution, a normal distribution. They've been counted up inside of each range, for instance, negative 0.8 to 0, 0 to 0 0.8, 0 0.8 to 1.6, etc. And this histogram reproduces at large numbers the behavior of the true distribution. Hist inside of PyPlot, inside of Matplotlib, is useful for creating a histogram. In this case, we're generating 10,000 random integers between 0 and 100 exclusive. We're going to plot that and we're going to show that. x equals np.random.randint 0 to 100 size of 10,000 plot.histx here you can see across the x-axis the many values, the many clusters of values that are, that are observed here from 0 to 99, inclusive of both ends, and the number of times that each of those baskets happened. So there's 10 bins or baskets that we have. The values in each range occurred about 1,000 times each, which for 10,000 random integer values is about what we expect. Everything's chopped up evenly. Everything's behaving that way. If you're having trouble thinking of what's going on with a histogram, I find it useful to think about tilting over a plot and watching all the values fall to one end and seeing how they stack into different bins. So in this case, we've taken a normal distribution, everything centered around the x-axis at zero. And as we tilt it over, you can see how all these values stack up and there's more values stacked up in the middle than there are at the edges. Here we're going to take a look at a thousand random normal values. We're gonna plot them with 10 bins, 10 buckets, in our histogram, we're going to see what that looks like. Again, we see something that behaves like a normal distribution, a bell curve distribution in many ways. If we change some of these values, for instance, if I increase the number of bins to say 100, I'll see a lot more choppiness. So putting things in bins tends to clear up a lot of the noise so you see sort of the overall behavior of the distribution. When you take that away, you see very choppy data. One way to improve on that is to increase your sample size. Right now I'm sampling at 1,000. If I keep the same number of bins at 100, but I change to 100,000 samples, I get something that looks a lot smoother because I'm taking more samples and what I'm doing is a better approximation of the underlying reality and what's going on here. It has been conjectured that the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 are evenly distributed in pi. We can use the tools we've seen so far to examine the distribution and decide if that's sustained, if that hypothesis is sustained, by the first 100,000 digits of pi. We've stored these in a file, pi.txt, which we're going to read out, we're going to clean up, which you see in the first line here, and then we're going to count for each value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, how many times that occurs in that resulting value. We're going to plot this, although as a bar chart rather than a histogram because it's a little bit cleaner and I want you to see how a bar chart works as well. So in this case you can see the digits across the x-axis and the number of times they occur, all about 10,000 times, up the y-axis. So for the first 100,000 digits of pi, modulo whatever statistical tests we might want to do to show how robust this result is, to visual accuracy, each of the digits occurs with equal likelihood in that range. In conclusion, 
What you need to take away from this lesson is how to access numpy.random, the basic tools and distributions, uniform, normal, and randint, and the tool shuffle and choice. You need to understand how to plot and interpret histograms. During the lesson material that you're going to work through, you're going to see many different histograms. And I want you to pay attention to how these differ from each other so that when you look at a histogram, you can tell me which of the three distributions that we're interested in that it belongs to. That identification is something that we're very interested in because we're going to be talking about application later on and you need to know which distribution you're working with at a moment's glance.